Hello everyone, this is Edouard Fouché and I'm going to talk about our paper Mining Text Outliers in Document Directories. This is a joint work between the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So what is this talk about? This talk is about classifying documents into directories. Take for example emails, news articles or research papers. Such documents are commonly ordered into human-made taxonomies. But such documents may also be classified wrongly and in two specific ways. The first way, type M, misclassification. A document was put in a wrong folder and should be put in another folder in the taxonomy instead. And the second type, type O, out of distribution. A document was put in a wrong folder, but there exists no adequate folder in the current taxonomy, so the user should create one. And so we see those mistakes as semantic outliers. And in our paper, we present an approach to mine both outlier types simultaneously. And so why are there such outliers in the first place? Well, the first reason is that we are drawing in data and the existing document repositories have grown very large. Take, for example, the number of articles published on archive over the last few years. This number of articles has increased tremendously. Also, the articles tend to be highly multimodal. There are many classes, many folders and subcategories. See, for example, the distribution of the articles in computer science on the archive. There are many subcategories. And so, when ordering the different articles in subcategories, it is very likely that there will be some mistakes. The second reason is that the maintenance of such repositories is difficult, because human classification is sloppy and unreliable in nature. Also, such repositories are handled by many or different users, and if you have different users, it also means that you often have different classification, even for the same article. And so why are those outliers difficult to find? Well, because they are ambiguous. Documents may have complex semantics, which even span across multiple fields. Sometimes the correct class is not even known yet. For example, a given document belongs to an emerging field. Also, for each problem, the folder structure are highly domain or user specific, so we don't have labels about which documents are outliers and which documents are inliers, so this problem should be treated as an unsupervised problem. Also, we find that the type O and type M outliers must be detected simultaneously. If we want to detect type M outliers, then maybe the type O outlier, so out of distribution, will be detected as type M outlier misclassification by mistakes. This would lead to a poor handling of such outliers. Also, if we want to detect type O outliers, then the noise introduced by the type M outliers may make the detection of type O outlier much more difficult. So in the paper, we found that the detection of both outlier types jointly leads to the best results with respect to both types of outliers. So in this paper, our first contribution is to explore the problem of mining text outliers in document directories. And we are, to the best of our knowledge, the first to make the conceptual distinction between type O and type M outliers, so out of distribution and misclassifications. Then we propose a new approach to detect text outliers, which we call the KJ nearest neighbors. This approach is inspired by the famous K nearest neighbors algorithm. And the specificity of our approach is that it exploits similarities between documents to documents and between documents to phrases. And it extracts semantic labels and similar documents, so this yields to good interpretability of our results. Then we provide an extensive evaluation of our approach, which shows that we improve the current state of the arts and that our results are interpretable. Please check out this GitHub repository where we published our code and data 
that is required for reproducibility. When looking at related work, we find that they either handle type O outliers or type M outliers, but not both at the same time. For type O outliers, one can use so-called standard outlier detectors. Those are either distance, neighbor, probabilistic or subspace-based approaches. Examples of famous approaches are the local outlier factor or the randomized subspace hashing. There exist also outlier detectors which were developed specifically for text data. They are either based on a mixture of von Mies Fischer distributions or non negative matrix factorization. A recent approach is also called context vector data description. For type M outliers, we found that they received very little attention so far. To detect such outliers, one can extend existing supervised text classification methods. And here are examples of such methods. In our paper, we compare with all the approach that we underline in this slide. Our framework is as follows. We assume that we are given a set of documents D, a set of classes C, and an initial but perhaps imperfect classification Y which maps each document D to a class C. Our first step is to extract the relevant phrases from the set of documents D and here we use an approach known as autophrase. So the outcome is a set of phrases P and we define the set O as the union of the set of documents and the set of phrases. So O is a set of all text objects. Then we learn a joint embedding, so a mapping of each text to a high dimensional space and here we use an approach known as joint spherical embedding. The advantage of this approach is that it is very efficient and also that uh, in the end we have a mapping of all text objects to a common space and so in this space we can measure the similarity between document to document and between document to phrases. In the second step we mine the representativeness of each uh, phrase. So the representativeness assign a score for each phrase and each class um, which is defined as the product of the integrity, the popularity and the distinctiveness in the phrase. Please see in this reference if you want to have more detail about this score. Once we have done that, we can apply our method, the KJ nearest neighbor, and the outcome of this method is two lists, a list O uh, of type O outlier and a list M of type M outliers. Here is the idea of the KJ nearest neighbor algorithm. Let K and J be the K nearest documents and the J nearest phrases of a document D. For each class C, we compute the following score. The score is the sum of the cosine similarity from the document D to its nearest neighbor document of class C times the sum of the cosine similarity of the nearest document D prime with the nearest phrases P times the representativeness of those phrases with respect to class C. And so we predict the class for which the score is maximized. The intuition behind that is that we maximize the posterior probability of class membership based on a posterior probability for each of the nearest documents that is proportional to the representativeness of their nearest phrases. So intuitively, we weight each labels based on the representativeness of their nearest phrases. Please check out our paper for a more formal derivation of this intuition. Then there is still one problem. What do we do if the prediction is very uncertain? Say, all the scores are very similar for a given document with respect to all the classes. Then this document does not clearly belong to any class. So we compute the entropy of the prediction and we set a threshold gamma based on percentile P star. That is to say, 
the proportion of documents whose entropy is smaller than gamma is equal to p star. And then we make the following decision. If the entropy of the document is greater than gamma, then D does not clearly belong to any class, and we say that D is a type O outlier. Otherwise, if the predicted class is different than the original class, then it is likely that D was misclassified. So we say that D is a type M outlier. Otherwise, we identify D as an inlier. And so in the end, the KJ nearest neighbor returns two lists of outliers O and M. Now we would like to evaluate our algorithm with respect to a varying number of classes and outliers. To this end, we use two datasets with many variants. The first dataset, NYT, is 10,000 articles from the New York Times, divided into five topics. Then we inject 1, 2, and 5% outliers from four other topics. And to try our approach against datasets of different size, we downsample the data by 50, 20, and 10%. Our second dataset, Archive, is more than 21,000 abstracts published on the archive from 10 computer science categories. So iteratively, we choose 1 to 5 inlier classes and we inject 1% outliers from the remaining classes. We simulate the type M outliers by moving M% percent of the document to another class randomly. And so then we use uh, standard uh, measures from the outlier detection community, such as the uh, ROC AUC, the average precision, or the recall precision at the top 1, 2, and 5%. First, we evaluate the performance of our approach with respect to its parameter. So the number of uh, nearest document k, the number of nearest phrases j, and p star that we use to set the entropy threshold. And here we show the recall and the precision for both type O and type M outliers with respect to varying number of uh, nearest phrases j and number of documents k. As we can see, both the precision and recall tend to increase as j and k increases, but it saturates after some point. So typically, k and j equal to 30 is enough to lead to very good recall and precision for both uh, outlier types. Then we can see that the p star is a trade-off between type O and type M outliers. For a very high value of p star, 99%, we can see that we have a very low recall for type O outliers, but a very high recall for type M outliers. The other way around, we have very high precision for type O outliers, but a low precision for type M outliers. So setting p star to 0.9 actually leads to relatively high recall and precision for both outlier types. So we set it to this value for the remaining of our experiments. Now we compare our approach with respect to its competitors. So as we can see, our approach tends to outperform the competitors with respect to all measures and all datasets. As we can see, however, um, our approach is being outperformed for very small datasets. Here, for example, you can see um, the context vector data description as the best result for the done sampled by 10% and the done sampled by 20%. This is not the case for the ROC AUC, but this suggests that our approach requires quite a lot of documents to deliver the best results and that it doesn't work as well for very small repositories. With respect to type M outliers, it is interesting to see that our approach outperforms all its competitors with respect to all datasets and almost all measures. Please check out our paper for more extensive results, in particular with respect to the archive benchmark, and we also provide an ablation analysis. A nice feature of our approach is that it provides interpretable results. Here we show a type O outlier from the New York Times dataset. 
and here are the first, second and third nearest neighbors of this document. It is interesting to see that they all somewhat relate to each other because they all deal with building construction project or political decision in education or even both. Also, when looking at the top phrases of this document, that is to say the phrases which are the most similar to the document in the embedding space, we can see that they are highly informative about the content of this article and also that the actual label education shows up in position 5. This is very useful, in particular when deciding for labels for new folders. Also here, we show a few examples with respect to the archive dataset. Here are two type O outliers. In fact, we can see those documents are not paper abstracts and they should be removed from the original dataset. Here is a type M outlier. Our approach suggests that this document should be classified into the category computation and language, while the author originally submitted this article in the category artificial intelligence. This makes sense intuitively when looking at this abstract. This paper is very much about natural language processing and word embeddings. In conclusion, we have seen that mining text outliers is difficult because outliers are manifold, domain-specific, and that the problem is fundamentally unsupervised. The outliers fall into two types, out of distribution and misclassification. Our approach, the KJ nearest neighbor, is the first one to detect both types simultaneously, and it does so by exploiting document-to-phrase similarities. We have shown that it leads to improved performance, in particular compared to the existing work, and that our results are interpretable. In the future, it would be interesting to investigate possible extensions of our framework. In particular, it would be interesting to handle other domains, that is to say, not only text data, but we could also apply our method to multivariate time series. It would be also interesting to investigate with respect to other settings, for example, in streaming data where the definition of classes may change over time, or the multi-class setting where documents might be assigned to multiple classes at the same time. Also, it would be interesting to extend our approach to handle settings where there are only a few documents per folder. So here I would like to show you the references for our slides. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very good day.